When it comes to JRPGs, we all love the immersive storylines, the strategic combat, timeless music, and iconic characters, but some seek to elevate their gaming experience for better or for worse by undertaking self-imposed challenge runs. These unique playthroughs involve restrictions or limitations on the player, pushing them to come up with unique strategies, hone their skills, and think critically about their choices. From solo character runs to speed runs and no item challenges and everything in between, these gameplay variations not only test the player's proficiency, but all also offer a fresh perspective on beloved classics and introduce a unique level of depth to familiar titles that we all know and love. So to learn more about challenge runs and everything that goes on with it, I had the great opportunity of catching up with one of the coolest people in the scene recently, Tanticles. Tanticles is a charming, funny, witty, quirky personality that loves to challenge these games that we all know and love in really unique and interesting ways. This program, whether you're watching or listening, is the inaugural episode of my new podcast called Turn-Based, which is dedicated to JRPGs, RPGs, the people that make them, the people that play them, and everything in between that makes these games special. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to listen along on Apple and Spotify, I've got links down below in the video description and vice versa. You can check the show notes on the podcast apps. I hope you enjoy the interview. This one was really fun. Let's go. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm, I'm super stoked to have you here. I'm a big fan of you, of your content. Uh, Tanticles. Well, the, the pleasure, the pleasure is all yours. It, it is all my pleasure. I'm, this is all. <laughs> this is all for me. You're just showing up for, on my behalf. Um, showing how, up, showing off. Yeah, yeah, that's right. How are you going today? It's great to have you here. Listen, life is good. I'm alive, and uh, I have not broken limbs today. So I, I feel like any day that doesn't happen is a good day. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I don't. I, I haven't broken any limbs. I don't have a persistent erection. And uh, I'm not drunk. So two out of those three of those things are good. <laughs> you, you, you choose. You choose. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll let the audience decide which, which ones. Audience, you decide. Let me know in the comments. Leave do, comment. do podcasts have comments? I don't know how that works. It'll be, well, this will I, be on YouTube and, and Spotify. Well, okay. Yeah, listen, I just work here, okay? You just, I, we don't I know the, the rules. rules. Yeah. No. Um, well, look, I'm, I'm excited to have you here again. I, I found you on YouTube probably mid, mid-year mid last year. And it was right around when uh, Legend of Dragoon got kind of pumped out again to the PlayStation 5 through the PS Plus and stuff. So I found you from some of the tier lists that you were doing. And You're I'm, a man of good taste. That yes, I, we're going to get to Legend of Dragoon yeah. soon. Don't worry. Oh, um, but oh, yeah. for those who aren't maybe familiar with you and, and kind of the content that you do, um, who are you? What, what do you do? What kind of genre is your YouTube channel? Tell us all about that. I am Tantocles. I am the most idiotic and incompetent challenge runner that exists on the face of this planet. And sometimes I'll I tell jokes. Now, they're not good jokes, <laughs> but I want to point out that I have told some of the jokes of history. Some of them. Some of them. And some yes. of them have landed it, pretty well already, even before we started yeah. going. Yeah. Uh, I, I like to think they have good bounce, you know, mm. which is why I recycle them. If you use them again, I, I'm an environmentalist. You're you know, upcycling. If you're, if you're going to... Yeah, if you're going to tell a joke, you want to use it. Well, I'm, with my audience, we all know it's downcycling. Sorry, guys. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you stick around is proof that, uh, that I don't deserve you. Oh, well, it's, basically. it's, it's, it's just like my boyfriend, that poor guy. <laughs> and, and your cats as well that you feature. Oh, my cats. Oh, you know what? Listen, we feed them two square meals a day. Yep. You'd think we don't at all. Can I have, I, okay, about, I about my cats. Yes. I have a thing, which is... Until a couple months, we just got a new kitten. Our old cat unfortunately died. Wah, wah. It was it was sad. We love her, but unfortunately, we had to lock this cat in our studio, right in my in my studio. That's the only room that we have that's like separate from the other cat. You know, you want you don't want to introduce mm -hmm. cats and have right away and have them fight. Unfortunately, that meant we have to had to put a litter box in here. And I swear, every single time I started streaming, this cat immediately took a big dump in that litter yep. box, and it was like, wow, nice job. I I don't get it. Why why then? Could you not wait until literally any other time of the day? I know. No consideration. I, I feel disrespectful. That. It's they always wait until you get that fresh letter in there. They see you with the bag and they're like, <sighs> "Here he comes! I can't wait to do it. It's going to be great." No, there's. I listen. Cat poop is one of my least favorite things about owning a cat. Mm -hmm. I they own me, but you know what I mean. I I do prefer dogs. We have cats, but it's fine. Fine. Yep. Yeah. Well, hey, I, hey, I'm a cat person too. Mine's mine's actually sleeping next to me here. So, um, oh, no cat cam. No cat cam today. We're low budget for no. the first one. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> so you're um 
you're obviously a fan of RPGs and JRPGs and stuff, and I, I am as well. And this this podcast is kind of centered around RPG and JRPG stuff. But I want to also take the time to get to know the creators that where I'm featuring here on the show and, and the other personalities that I'm having on the show. And I I I love your personality. I think that you're great. I think you're hilarious, and that's why a lot of people have stuck around for your channel and your channel's had a lot of growth over the last year as well um i'm so sorry that that's terrible that way. yeah <laughs> it's no it's an abusive relationship i mean i i um i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a loser a boozer and a user but i don't really okay maybe not those last two mm. definitely loser but um no i yeah i love rpgs i do i like games that are sort of a puzzle but with a good story and that's what rpgs do for me uh which is interesting because I, you know, I love FF7 Remake, of course, but like the original holds a special place in my heart because it really is a puzzle of how to use your resources efficiently. You're not aiming your sword; you're just swinging it and praying that it hits. Hmm. You know, that's very true. Yeah, there's there's a lot more strategy involved than just some people saying pressing square to win or pressing triangle for um, punishing mode uh, to win. But um, yeah, I know there's a joke in there. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Final Fantasy 16 was worth about that. So at least that's, Final Fantasy 7, you have multiple characters, and yeah, yeah. It's, that's, that's I mean, true. we listen. We all love Clive. We all love him. He's great. Oh. He's hot. Well, I would like. I would. I would. I'd hit it. Yeah. We all would. I'm a simp for like, Clive. Yeah, we all are. Uh, but it's you know it doesn't didn't do quite as much for me as the other games. I haven't I I haven't even finished 16 yet. Oh really? I just got bored. Wow. I got bored. Don't. Don't tell anyone. No one's watching. Right? I won't this, say. Is, this is a private. This is podcast, private, right? unlisted. Just, yeah, just for us. Okay, good. Good. I loved it. I thought it was great, but that's that's fine. And the, the thing that I've realized oh. is that, like, I love that so many people are passionate about Final Fantasy or JRPGs in general. Everybody can have a different opinion, but we can all still coexist and still like the same yeah. thing, which is which is awesome. And, you know, and it, you know, it's not it's not their fault that they're wrong. They're going to come around someday. I will come right? around someday. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm one of those. Uh, you specifically, specifically will definitely figure it out, but we'll get there. They will definitely get there eventually. It might take them longer. It's all about growth. Um, what is your favorite like RPG? What's your favorite JRPG? Is there one specific go to they always come back to? The best JRPG of all time is Chrono Trigger. There's really no question for me that has always been the best. The way they explore time travel, the way they explore the development of combat system that sort of makes sense with each character's personality and their plot arc is completely engrossing. And I don't think that any RPG has done what Chrono Trigger has done for character development ever. I agree. Maybe Legend of Dragoon a little bit, but I, I think Chrono Trigger really takes it. And, and their, their mastery of how timelines work and sort of how to influence parts of a timeline without completely destroying it is fantastic. Although I would like to see a game where you actually could like truly destroy a timeline by going back in time. That'd be cool. I'd like that. Uh, maybe that's where remake and rebirth is going. I don't know. Maybe no spoilers. I don't know. Uh, I haven't, I haven't finished either, believe it or not. I actually, really? <laughs> I, I have not. I, so I got to, uh, Shinra Tower in Remake, yeah. and I have Rebirth. My boyfriend's actually playing Rebirth right mm. now. He's he's in the other room. I had to have him turn down the uh, I had to have him turn down the volume a little bit so yes. he wouldn't hear it in here. Uh, but I I just um, I get so engrossed in the old games that it's like I, I can't quite finish it. But I'm gonna finish it soon. I'm gonna play yeah. Rebirth. I'm also playing Persona Three Reload. So it's like I have a million different <laughs> games that. I have to do, and you know, Thousand Year Thousand Year Door remake is coming soon. That's very true. So, so do you find yourself kind of sitting in the in the vein of uh, the, like the older games? Is it purely just nostalgia, or is it just you you feel that you can connect more with the older stuff just because that's what you grew up with? Because I'm kind of the same way. So I, it's definitely a little bit of both. I I definitely replay games at, for comfort that I love. At the same time, I also feel like the the nature of a lot of games has changed, and with the increase in the amount of spectacle you can get from more advanced hardware, the games have focused more on real-time combat, which is not as much what I enjoy. I do enjoy them. Like, I mean, you know, I'm a, I, I like Dark Souls. I like, um, I, li I, I do like those sort of action games. You know, I'm a Mario person too. But what I, what I love is a system where you can sort of manage your resources effectively to not necessarily even like break a game. I do it, although I do love doing that. But, sometimes even play minimalistically and sort of see what you can do with the puzzle to use as little as possible, which mm. is sort of what my channel does. Yep. Yeah. And that, in, that's in different a, forms. Yeah. That's, and that's a great segue. So what, like 
obviously your RPG centric for your your YouTube your technically is YouTube channel. You do have something else, which I, we'll talk about later because that's kind of fun. Ooh. Uh, or maybe, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> no, we will, we will, we will, we will. We'll get there. Because I mean, uh, <clears throat> it's been a while since I've posted on that. Yes, yeah. So what, what actually got you into um, creating content for YouTube centered around uh, RPG stuff? Is it just because you're so passionate about this and, you're, and you've already had a background in YouTube? You just saw something there and you wanted to go for it? So the overall story, I think, is, I, you know, this channel was actually my first channel that I started. And then I started posting some videos that... Are now privatized because they were looking back at them. They're so bad. It, it was like your top fifteen things you should do daily in Genshin Impact. Whoa, right? Uh, Hide those. Like, uh, okay, so that's that's gone. We're we're out of that era. We're we're into the era of actual things that people might act, might want to watch. Mm. Um, and then I I realized that I I didn't know what I was doing, and so I started a sort of reaction channel that was called Dr. Jake. It still is called Dr. Jake. Mm. It still exists. You can find it. I will probably eventually go back there in a different form. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm a physician. And so I, um, even though I was like completely living in medicine and working way too much in my medical job, which I, I do maintain still, I, I did reactions to sort of more queer oriented content that mm. had some sort of medical flair in it. A lot yep. of sort of RuPaul's Drag Race content around that. There was a great like RuPaul's Drag Race segment that was called Gay's Anatomy, where they had like the gay <laughs> version of, of Grey's Anatomy. It was yeah. great. It was great. They have diverticulitis and <laughs> it's fantastic. So uh, I did that. And then eventually <laughs> I sort of got back into my gaming channel and started making these tier lists, which I, I, I think tier lists are fun. We all love them. I, mm -hmm. I think I started watching Adam with FED doing like some Fire Emblem Three Houses tier list. He does a great job with those. Uh, and I... And then one day, I just, I just realized, like, I could, what if I could just beat Legend of Dragoon with only Dart? And that started something that just lit a flame within me. Not, no pun intended, because yes. Dart is the yep. fire yep. person. That's good. Anyway, that's good. Yep. And, and then I sort of realized that that was a, a really nice direction to take my channel. I could, I love challenge runs. I do like, I've always liked them. Um, you, you know, I, I... Um, I, you know, I hadn't seen a ton of RPG challenge run channels. And, and so I figured since that video did so well, maybe this is a direction I could take this in. And then things really started to grow mm. once I did that, because in, you know, on YouTube, if you can come up with an interesting title, that is three quarters of the battle. It is. People are going, people are going to want to click it. And if you are, if you're trying to start YouTube, start with good titles, literally right out a hundred titles and choose the best five and throw away the rest that is how to do it because you don't want to be posting something that wasn't your best you want it to be your best video every single time have i succeeded at that no absolutely not but i do my best mm -hmm. right um and so now i'm sort of really on this particular channel only doing that and i love these challenge runs i think it's cool to play a game in a way it wasn't intended if a game has three characters, play it with one. If a game has a mechanic that seems integral to it, like, for example, in Legend of Dragoon, dragooning. Yes. Don't use it. Don't use it. Well, see what, hap what happens if you don't use it at all. And the answer is not much in that case because you don't need it. Yep. Um, but that, that really spurred me to look into other games and what I could do. And a lot of my challenges are solo character challenges, which I find really fun. Just what can this one character do? It's so what interesting. It's so interesting because like, I, me being a fan of RPGs, like I, I understand how they work, especially like um, some of the the more classic games, like Super Mario RPG. Like this is this is what got me engaged in your channel, aside from Legend of Dragon, which we're going to talk about soon. Um, I, I liked seeing how how do you get to that point where um, in Mary Moore, is it Mary Moore, where the where the yes. cake where the cake boss is? Like, how's he going to do oh, this? Oh God. And and the, and <laughs> the answer is I don't. Spoilers, you yeah. don't. And it's it's so funny because you have these set uh, rules that you establish for yourself, but sometimes you cannot break the game in that way. And I love that. I think it's great. And maybe very maybe someday we'll have tech that allows us to break the cake. In <laughs> I mean, I, listen, I've broken a lot of cakes in my life. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're gonna edit in the ding, I'll do, do right? a, yeah right nice little glow yeah. yep but it, i find it really interesting because if, if i were to actually title my videos the way that they go it's like how far can we get in the game with this character assuming that 
this character is the only one that can act, but we don't actually take all the other characters out of the party. And mm-hmm. if it's literally impossible, we just do it. You know, I don't think that title is going to work on YouTube. And you established that, that in the first yeah. few minutes. Because it's like your, oh, your challenge runs like... Oh, the number of comments I get. Oh, my gosh. Oh, the number of comments I get. Well, actually... Well, actually, Tantacles, <laughs> or actually, those, those are the people who call me Tentacles, right? Well, actually, Tentacles, uh, Cloud's not in a party when he falls into the live streams. You can't beat Final Fantasy VII with only Cloud. I don't know if you know. Were you aware of that? Uh, in the first 30 seconds of your video when you said it, did you? Were you aware of that? <laughs> right? Like, that's, that's my audience, a lot of them. So we, we uh, actually, in my Discord server, we make fun of those people because I find them amusing. I have to say, engagement. it's um, as as one's YouTube channel grows, you find that there, there are, I would like to say, in the most friendly way possible, undesirables that show up in your comments, and will either. How do, well, hold up! How dare you? I, I, I How can't dare believe. you, Eric? All of my commenters <laughs> and all of my viewers are the kindest and warmest and cuddliest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, potentially the most disgusting people I've ever met. And I Stand love that corrected. about them. Okay, but go on. No, but you get, like, as, as your channel grows or one's channel grows, there are some people that just completely do not read the room. It's like, of course you're going to be doing this. But the caveat is, yes, the other two party members are going to be dead. Or yes, you're going to be doing this. I find that uh, it's just funny that people, um, they'll, they'll see it as clickbait. And then they'll immediately dismiss you within the first few minutes. Eric, can I ask you a question? Please. And then you can ask me the same question back. I'm only asking you this question, so you'll ask me this question sure, back. I want to put that out there. If you don't ask me the question back again, you failed this podcast. Of course. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's your podcast, so technically I'm not being tested. Anyway, yeah, sure. do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite commenter? Um, I do. Yes, I do, actually. Oh, go ahead. Pop there, off. There's a few. Like, there's somebody that always comments, like, very nice stuff. So it's one of the people that's kind of, like, in my friends group. But is there a commenter that mm-hmm. I... Like a hater? Is that what you're referring to? Is there like a hater that comes in? You know, I'm going to, you'll ask me the question and I'll give you mine later, but you get to choose whoever is your favorite. Uh, oh, I mean, there's a, your cu- favorite? there's a couple other friendly YouTubers that I do, like my friend uh, John Chicken Phillips or another guy, Upper Nimbus. He's, he's great, great, mm-hmm. great content creators. But because I'm dying to know your answer, is there, do you have a favorite that, that comments on yours? Well, it's time for a history lesson. Please kids. elaborate. Long, long ago, there was a website that you may be familiar with called Game Facts. <laughs> and that poster is only known as Vigester. Now, Vigester has been banned from Game Facts. He told me that in one of my lives. But every single time, Vigester, I, I will share some with you after this so you can post them because, because the capitalization is just legendary. It, if you go to the, if you, if anyone's on my Discord, if you're watching this podcast, go to Troll Watch and just search for successful. Because if, if the jester does not comment something with bogus capitalizations and, and completely odd takes about the characters, for example, like everyone is crap and you cannot possibly beat this game this way. I always use the cheats to get 9999 damage on everyone before I play. <laughs> if, if you, if the jester comments on my, it does not comment on one of my videos. It is a failed video. Mm. It's failed because it means it has gotten no reach. Because the jester, from my perspective, should be able to see every single one of my videos because they comment on every single one with these inane takes. I can, and and he's been doing this for tw- they. I actually don't know their gender. Uh, they've been doing this for for twenty five years on Game Facts. I swear <laughs> there is the jester with these takes. You can just search V E G H. E S T H E R. It's amazing. That's Favorite awesome. commenter. But I have to say, the nice, like, I am okay with a little bit of salt. That's fine. Sure. What I don't like is when people start insulting me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you know, I think everyone gets those commenters like, you're ugly. Um, to which I say, uh, no, you. But <laughs> what, like, thank you next. <laughs> but the jester is always on topic, <clears throat> right? Mm hmm. That's what I love. The Jester is hating on those characters and he hates them adamantly. And it's always on topic every single time. Now, he yep. clearly there's some trolling going on. People sure. argue with the Jester. They don't really read their responses. They just sort of post that thing they posted again. I'm fine with that. If you're, you can hate on any JRPG characters you want, no issue. Yeah. They're not real. I, wanna, I know that this may come as a surprise to some of the weebs in my chat. <laughs> The JRPG characters are not 
real. They're fictional characters. They do not exist in this universe, in any universe, except the one within the game. So just, they're not real. Yep. Get over it. So anybody with the Tifa body pillows out there, it's time to, <laughs> it's time to put them down. <laughs> no, you can, no, grab them tighter, thrust, do what you gotta do. Listen, do what you gotta do. <laughs> listen, if you're, if you're not getting it elsewhere, your Tifa body pillow is perfect. Okay? Yep. So you deserve to be loved, even if only by Goose Down. <laughs> okay. It's gotta be done. It's gotta be done. Yeah. Um I but I, I really admire the the challenge videos that you do, and I think it is um I, the the thing that I've I've learned about YouTube is like the more niche you go, the better. And doing challenge runs for JRPGs is like so niche it's not even funny, but that's where you, I I think you've probably found you you've had the most growth. Um, and I love that. It's really interesting because I agree that initially uh, niching down really hard is the way to go. So you build your initial audience. But eventually, if you want to grow, mm -hmm. you do have to broaden a little bit. And and there's this great guy who, um, funny, he was on Channel Makers and then he quit Channel Makers to start his own thing. And he's great, uh, called Nate Black. And if you've seen his initial video on Channel Makers about the algorithm, you want to start in a niche. And then the way that you want to expand is in a way that captures your niche and captures a little bit more. And then YouTube will continue to grow your videos. So you mm. do want to go broader. And if you look at someone like Alpha Rad, I, th I think he's a great example of this. Like his videos could be considered niche. He does a lot of Pokemon videos, but he also will do something like go to Japan, to Nintendo World, which mm. captures that entire audience and more. Mm. People who aren't just interested in Pokemon, right? Expanding sort of out... To, you want to expand to just immediately outside of your niche and not go to a completely different sector. Right. So that that's, makes sense. That's the way to do it. Yeah. That's really growth good. is hard. Growth is hard on YouTube. Yeah, believe me. I know it's, it's taken me 12 years to get to the point where I feel like I'm finally having some sort of. You stopped posting for eight years. I did. What do you want? I, I did. Well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's got to have that clout. You know what I mean? You got to stop posting. I think, no, but I think, I think you did a smart thing. You, you stopped, you took the time you needed to gain, your, to grow your skills, right? <clears throat> because you're, you're editing I, I took a look at some of your older videos, and they were um, oh yeah they were they they were Mid. great they were they're fantastic uh, <laughs> videos and they're videos. And new ones you know you have you have they they are some of the videos of time yes they are they um but you you know you took the time you improved mm. your editing you uh, worked on your 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 stage your your camera presence I mean your personality has a lot of work you know let's. Come on. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> you know, no, no, listen, I tolerate you out of love. Hmm. That's love. And that, that's why you agreed to come on today, just because, you know, you can bear with me for pardon the pun. Oh, no, I just need the exposure and I was bored. But <laughs> yes, whatever. If that, you know, I, no, let me simply say, if, if that makes you feel better. Sure. Then I, and, and just for all you audience out there, we're, we're joking with each other, all right? That's, I don't actually think none of this that is real. Eric is a terrible person. <laughs> I know that he's a terrible person. <laughs> of course. Look and, at me. Uh, and I'm worse because it takes one to know one. You should know that. Okay? Absolutely. I love it. And, the, right? this is the, and this is the thing that I think draws a lot of people to you. It's, it's your personality, and that's one thing you just mentioned before. I know. They have such bad taste. It's, it's awful taste, but it's, it's almost kind <sighs> of like, again, niching in. And that allows people to attach to get attached to you, and that's why I think you've had a lot of success on YouTube over the last. Yeah, and if and if you need help, yeah. I, we ha we will post the number for a number of self help hotlines in the discreetly mm. do of this video, okay? Because if you like me, then you clearly hate yourself. Let me tell you that right now. That's so. True. And I support that. We all should hate it. If you can't hate yourself, how in the hell are you going to hate somebody else? But you know, you might need help. Well, you got to have a little bit of self loathing. That's not mm -hmm. everything's perfect. But that's, that's one funny word, discreetly do. I love that word. And the other thing that I, I love about your videos is don't buy a boat. Where does that well, come from? Don't. Where does that come well, from? It's so funny. It's just, I just said a stupid thing once. I, you know, in every video, I sort of like pick a theme and I go with it. And then if something, a lot of my videos are just sort of like, I, I didn't use the script actually. I would just say things. And then it's one day I just, I realized I was getting a boat in every JRPG mm. and I just randomly said, don't buy a boat. And then a, I got a ton of comments that just said, yeah, don't buy, I, I, my friend bought a boat and now they're dead. <laughs> and I said, I'm, I'm so sorry. Is the boat okay? Mm -hmm. You know, cause I was concerned. I had a concern about the boat. Of course. And, um, the boat was not okay. So I, I cried Terrible. myself to sleep that night and because 
you know, it's, you know, it's like Susie Orman says, people first, then money, then things. But above all of that, boats. Mm-hmm. She says. So that's the quote. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, I, I just kept saying it. You know, I, I think branding is hard and a lot of good branding. It, okay, here's, get ready, get yep. ready. Knowledge bomb coming right now. Let's hear it. If you, branding is hard, but the easiest way to make a brand stick is to choose what already is working and keep doing that, right? If you have, if, if you're branding, if you're not, if you don't have an audience on YouTube, on Instagram or elsewhere, and you're like, well, I want to keep up my branding. If you don't have an audience, you technically don't have any branding. True. Okay. I know you think you do. I understand that. I felt that same way for a while, especially on the, the doctor channel. I was like, I am the brand. And everyone else was like, we don't, we don't care about mm. that. But if you, if, if you have something that works, you keep doing that. You don't have to do that 100% every single moment. But that thing is something that can continue to carry through to the next pieces of work that you do. True. It might be, it might be a funny phrase. It might be a funny costume type. It might be something, just something special that you do. But when people latch on to that one thing, just put that in the back of your head as something that did, in fact, work. I know that's hard because sometimes it's not the thing that you hoped would succeed. But you can use it to your advantage to build your brand hmm. further and insert other things into it. That's very true. And that's why the don't buy a boat in my in my mind sticks out in all your videos and it's that reoccurring theme to where people are waiting for it now. People, people are people waiting, waiting for it. waiting for me to say don't buy a boat and 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 I will say the other thing is don't let it get stale. Right. It, one of the things that you, I don't know if you've noticed this, but in this interview, I have like brought out some references, some quotes. Yes. Right. But it's always, it always has to be steel and twist. Mm. Don't just repeat something someone said word for word. Right. Okay. So if I'm in, like, okay, RuPaul quotes. So like, like, uh, dude, why am I dry right now? Why do I have nothing? I don't know. It's because you're right? on the spot, probably. It's on the, I'm on the spot. You might not be in your right? out, 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 damn spot. Is, is what I said to my dog. I just did it. See, mm. I twisted it. I went to little Lady Macbeth there, but then transitioned into a joke about dogs. It's yeah. not good. It wasn't a good joke. It was but rough. you see what I mean? Like, always... To- I- <laughs> oh, nice one. That was, that was pretty bad. Was- Rock. Um, <laughs> but, but, but if you're going to take a quote, if you're going to explore that way of doing things, take the quote, twist it so it's something new. Apply it in a new context. Make it something novel so that people say you did something I didn't expect. Hmm. And so, you know, when I do the don't buy a boat thing now, sometimes I will say don't buy a boat. Sometimes I'll be interrupted by a boat popping up into the background. Sometimes I'll, um, maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe you should buy a boat. I mean, this boat looks kind of nice. I mean, it's Hmm. look, it has a a beautiful chassis, the bilge, look at the bilge on that. Oh, oh, there's a monster (laughs) inside it. Don't buy a boat, right? Just, just think about how you're going to twist that. And, and the more you can twist, the more interesting it gets mm. until it might become something that you don't recognize anymore. And that is how you transition out of that brand thing that you didn't like as much. You True. twist it. I like that. I like, so when are we getting the don't buy boat t-shirts? The D, uh, hashtag DBAB. Is that what you're talking about? We're working yeah. on it. We're working on it. Yeah. I need to, I need to, you know, I need to commission an artist, find a company that wants to that find a company to help produce them. And then, you know, have people that actually want to buy them, and I, then you know, I know those three things. I know some people uh, genuinely. You know some, oh, I genuinely, I know people who can do shirts, so I will send you their. Oh, please do. Yeah, I yep. I need to get my DBAP merch going. Do it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll hook you. Yeah, and I like my other shirt is probably like my other car is a Vigester, You know, <laughs> so I just you know go with what works. It does, and it's so, uh, or and, and maybe the final thing was probably like I died. That's probably yes. yep. That's the other one. The final one. But here you go. Yeah. You got you got three ideas for shirts. Sure. Yeah, run, I'm ready. Run with it. My body is ready. Uh, <laughs> is I, it, but is the world ready for these shirts? I don't think they are. I don't, this is what I'm saying. Like I, I I think that your merch line would be really good. So I'd buy I'd buy all three. If you do all three, especially don't buy a boat. That's that's my favorite. Don't buy a boat is the one. It's the that's one. The one. That's some great insight about branding. I, I like that. And the, I think it's interesting because we were discussing before we went live or whatever um, via DM the other day is 
you decided to like kind of remove your visual presence from the thumbnails and was that more of like a, a decision to just be kind of less of a face of the channel and let the content steer itself it's really interesting because uh, you know i did that based on sort of what i was seeing in other successful thumbnails in different niches for example like Genshin Impact thumbnails mm. never have the faces. I watched. I you well. I just quit Genshin, but you know, uh, when I when I actually was watching those content creators, they never have the creator thumbnails on them. They have the character st uh, face on them, and I, I sort of said like, wait, what if I just didn't have my face on these, and I just went with the game and let people sort of discover who I am in the video because I have confidence in my content and they'll figure out who I am, and you know, it worked. And then I watched this amazing interview. Uh, I don't know if you watch Colin and Samir. They're two of my favorite YouTube creators. And they basically do these like super long form interviews with content creators. But Matt Pat, who mm. just is basically like quitting all of his channels and, and sort of leaving them to be run by somebody else. Um, he basically said, you know, whenever they start a new channel, whenever the theorists start a new channel, they look at a bunch of channels and sort of figure out what the dominating thumbnail style is. And then they start sort of putting their own twist on it. And then sometimes that thumbnail results in somewhat of a conversation, right? And someone will take one of their ideas and then put a twist on it. And that's when they know that they are in. And it's, it's interesting because I've noticed some of that happening with my thumbnails and titles. I've noticed some new challenge runners popping up, sort of doing the same ideas that I am. Mm. And let me be frank here. People should keep doing that because... These the ideas that I come up with, they're evergreen. They're the way that you make a video is going to be different than the way that the, than the way that I do mine. But that's sort of how I realized that I was starting to have an impact. I saw someone literally make like a "Can you beat Final Fantasy X with Titus only?" challenge, and literally like linked me in the description. And I was like, "Oh wow, oh, I'm in." Your keyword. Someone is enjoying me. Yeah. Uh, someone did. Um, someone did like a Super Mario RPG critique video and then put me in the description. I was like, okay, I'm in. These, um, it's, it's, it's both flattering, but also an indicator that I'm having some sort of impact, even at sort of a, a more micro level than some of these like huge creators on how this is going. And it's, it, it's interesting because I think eventually my face may make its way back into some thumbnails, probably more stream thumbnails than anything else. Yeah. Uh, your, th your face has always been in your thumbnails. That's mm -hmm. well, at least of late. And, and I think that's it. I, you know, it's like there's no right way to do this. No. And if you want, you can make the brand yourself with your, with, with your face in the mm -hmm. thumbnail or without. It's just a matter of creating a compelling thumbnail. Yep. And for me right now, the thumbnails are more compelling without my face in them, in yep. my opinion. We'll see how that develops. Yeah. And that's what got me to click on them initially. It, like it's, it always comes down to the image. And then you see the title describing that image. It's like, okay, yeah, I'll click on that. And I've always been kind of 50-50 on whether or not to have, my, at least in regards to my channel, my face on it. But I've just done it so so much now that it's just kind of my shtick, whether I like it or not. Um, and I put I put a poll out there on, on Twitter and um, on my YouTube page a couple of months ago. Like, are you more likely to click on a video with somebody's face on it or, or not? And then the third option was, it just depends on if the title's relevant. And it was mostly yes, mostly yeah, I'll click on it if the title's interesting. And it was a lesser percentage of no, not interested because of somebody's in there. I think so many people are doing that now. It kind of doesn't really make a yeah. difference now. I think I think it's really interesting because you know when I started YouTube, I would I would occasionally put out a poll that's like, what what do you think you would want to watch? And and what I realized is my viewers and all viewers on YouTube don't really know what they want to watch. They it's true. they get the recommendations from the whatever what do we call it? And is it the algorithm page? It's the, F, the FYP, F, yeah, FYP, whoever it is. Yeah. Maybe the FYP is more TikTok. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not one of those girlies. I'm not. I'm not a but TikTok girly. No. I can't do it. I can't do it. No. Long form. Anyway, you know, you get those recommendations, and I think people look and they say, "What is the most interesting thumbnail on this page? What draws their eye?" And then they click, mm -hmm. and that could be a game they've never seen before. That could be something with someone's face in it. That could be something with just a compelling image in it. And each person is different, but people don't necessarily know what they want to watch until they click it. Yeah. you're drawn to those thumbnails and and that's why thumbnails are so important right um i will say i like youtube i even though thumbnails are freaking hard and like the worst part of youtube for me they are really important to building an audience because people when someone clicks your video on youtube this is something that i love about youtube when they click it they are choosing 
to watch your video, right? If you're like on the shorts shelf or you're on TikTok, you're just swiping through and they are delivering the content directly. Yep. Yes, you can swipe away from it, but that content is coming to you whether you decide to watch it or not. And that is what I hate about TikTok and YouTube shorts. I agree. I don't like, and, and reels to some extent as well. I think reels are a little bit more faithful to who you've selected to follow. True. But TikTok is not. TikTok is absolutely not. They'll show you anything viral and YouTube shorts, same thing. Anything viral doesn't, doesn't matter. Obviously, there's some algorithmic selection to it, but to, to be forced to click someone's video and choose to watch it is huge because it gets you invested right away. It's true. That's true. And that's something I never really uh, uh, thought about because I suppose, of course, I'm making a decision to, yes, I want to click on that. Yes, that's interesting. Yeah. But why wouldn't anybody else do that? So that, that makes total sense. So, but thumbnails to me, I think it's the most fun. Like now that I've kind of gotten the hang of it, at least I have some sort of template that I run with. Like it's. I, you know, I have one too. I just, something about them. It just, I never know whether it's the thumbnail or the title or the topic that is making my audience not click. Yep. I never know. Right. Cause YouTube views are always up and down, right? You never know exactly what you're going to get. Um, that being said, the nice thing about the types of videos that I make, which are sort of evergreen, is that they can blow up at any time if they want to. Like my, my Final Fantasy VII Cloud Only video is like seeing a renaissance in the last two weeks because of yeah. rebirth. So well, if something comes up that makes something trend, they just blow up again if you have a good thumbnail. There's always that opportunity for your stuff to be... I suppose if you're not making... And this is the one thing that a lot of people do. They, a lot of people fall into this, this trap of making game news stuff. So it's only relevant within 24 to 48 hours or maybe within a week or so. But then after that, that that's just dead, dead weight content. So like, I mean, I, this is why I like your challenge run stuff because people can watch this at any point. And yeah, like and you said- apparently people rewatch it. Yeah. I, that's what I've heard. People go back and they watch them again and say, wait, how did he do that thing with the thing? Where did he die? And the answer is everywhere. For that I, I, I know, I, you do have your death count on there at, at yeah, all times. I, know, and I, I love do. that. Um, <laughs> But I, I, you know, I think the the way to go with YouTube, at least from my perspective, there are people who can do this like news content really well and get it out fast. But I think the way to go is evergreen content that will. If you don't know what evergreen content is, by the way, because I've I've heard a lot of people ask this, it's it's basically content that you can watch at any time, and it will always be relevant. Mm -hmm. So that's why there are so many of these like retrospective, look at this old game channels out there, right? Because these games aren't they're not going away. If they've been popular for 20 years, they're not going to suddenly become unpopular. People will always have nostalgia for them. New audiences will discover them. I mean, Legend of Dragoon was one where I was like, I didn't realize people actually would, would love this game so much. And they, yeah. they do. It's funny because um, I've, I've always been a fan of Legend of Dragoon like ever since it first came out. And it's a game like I didn't click with straight away because, I don't know, my brain wasn't fully developed. So, of course... But now, as a, as a mature adult, mine still isn't. So I yeah, can't. well, that's the thing. But it's one of those things that stuck with you, and I, I love that game so much. And when it was coming out uh, last year for PS Plus, I was like, oh, I'll make a video on that. Immediately, I just had just so much growth on my channel. I'm like, oh my god, people love this game. And then you yeah. start to realize again, we discussed earlier niching down, but it's content that I suppose is always going to be there. People will always like, and that's how I found you because I. A man of taste, you know, Legend of Dragoon. How could you not? Yeah, uh, Justice for Congo. I know. Is, uh, you know the 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 uh, the presiding notion on my channel. Uh, I, I get all these comments that are like, "When, when are you running the game with only Congo?" And I'm like, "When when my hate for myself has grown further." Because <laughs> that the the tolerance for pain that you need to have to to run Legend of Dragoon with only Congo is. It's high. It's very high. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm still working on hating myself more. Uh, and I hope that you all get there too. If you ever wanted to ruin a perfectly good, perfectly good day, that's, that's how you do it. One day? Just one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to talk about an entire, yeah. 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 Um, and so, uh, like, so far, you've, you've done challenge videos for uh, Final Fantasy stuff, Super Mario stuff, um, Legend of Dragoon. Um, Chrono Cross. Chrono Cross is what you're doing at the moment now. You're doing red only. Oh, yeah. I, I joined. I joined your stream. I the just other day. finished actually. Oh, I did just you? Finished on. Oh my god, it was a long stream, but I, it was like oh, it was a, a nine, nine hour, hour stream. Oh, yeah. I had to. I had to finish it. I, I was like, we're getting it done today. I need to move on to something else. Oh my for, goodness. for the next challenge. So, yeah, it's one of my favorite games. So I figured 
time to challenge it. I don't see any Chrono Cross challenge run content, so I don't either. I it's me. Now I gotta ask it's you, me. as as a fan of Chrono Cross, and I'm I'm a fan of Chrono Cross as well. And I didn't have this on the question questionnaire sheet that I have or my notepad. Um, what? Where would you? Where do you put Chrono Cross? Is it a good sequel to Chrono Trigger, or is it just a good standalone game? It's both, right? I mean, I think the genius of that game is that it is both a sequel to Chrono Trigger and can be played without knowing anything about the universe. The circumstances behind it hint at the events of Chrono Trigger, but do not spoil them and complement them, I think, quite well and give an idea of... There, there are certainly some missing pieces, but they give, an, they give a good idea of what the universe is like and sort of what powers control it and how they interface with time and multiple universes. Yes. That's my best explanation. I think that... I think they could have put more references to Chrono Trigger in it, but I don't think we would have seen a remaster without it being completely independent. I agree. I agree with that. And I think it needed to be that way. That's funny because I... I, it's, I it's almost like, a, it's almost like a, a Final Fantasy game. Right, like each is in its own universe, and because Chrono Cross almost is in its own universe, right? It's like two parallel universes that are connected, but not really a big piece of mm -hmm. each other. Yeah, it's uh, the older I've got, the more time I've had to think about it. Like Chrono Cross, uh, Chrono Trigger is just one straight line, and you jump through different periods of time. Whereas Chrono Cross is two parallel lines because they're two time periods, and you're just going back and forth in between trying to solve the mysteries of the universe. So in that sense, like. Yeah, it could be considered a, a maybe a, a bad sequel, but I still think Chrono Cross is an amazing game. I mean, like I, Absolutely. I, I almost think I prefer the music of Chrono Cross over Trigger. Um, you know, maybe the game. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. That that's a hard sell for me, but I think it's possible that it's, they're they're very similar in, I'm a, eyes, in I'm terms a, of style. I'm a huge fan of of uh, Yasunori Matsuda. I love I love those soundtracks. Mm -hmm. You know, legendary stuff. But yeah, yeah I, I just love to see. I like. I love to pick other Chrono Cross fans' brains. Yeah. Uh, on, on, on I mean, I like. Think. I like games that involve sort of time loops and yeah. time paradoxes, and that's what Chrono Cross is, right? It's one big yes. time loop paradox with something coming back in time to affect the past. Anyway, the other, you know, one of my all-time favorite games uh, that's not a, a JRPG is Outer Wilds. I don't know if you've played that, but it's essentially a space exploration game that exists within a time loop. And you technically have all the tools that you need to solve the puzzles at the very beginning of the game. And everything that you do in that game is just you learning how the universe works. And you have the same tools no matter how you go through the game. Nothing changes. But you learn more, and eventually you have the tools in your belt to solve all of the puzzles in the game. Which I think is pretty cool. Interesting. I should play that. Definitely. It is, it's, it's very steamable, I think. I think it's also on Switch, actually. So you can really, any console now. Uh, um, but well, it's one of my favorites. There's a Steam sale on it. Maybe I, I could play it, play it on Steam Deck. That'd be convenient. I think that would be an amazing game to play. Yeah. Another of my favorite games is called Return of the Oberdin, which sort of also, you, you, you have a watch that lets you go back in time. If you see a dead body, you can go back to the time of their death. Ah. And there is basically a ship has come back from a huge disaster where everyone on the ship has died. So this so is like a, an older style looking game, is it? It is sort of an older style. Oh, it's like cell shaded. Sure. Okay, I'm looking yes, at it now. And it's, Steam. It, no, really, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's quite stylized, but you, you're constantly going back in time and sort of discovering what happened and putting the pieces together as to who everyone was. And eventually, you're, you basically, you're an insurance uh, not broker, you're an insurance adjuster. And so yeah. you have to determine who died and uh, what they died from. Well, Every single person on that boat, based on what you see, just, just visually what you see, there's no real, like, there's no real hints verbally. Like, no one tells you what's going on. Don't buy a boat. Um, don't buy a boat. <laughs> don't buy a boat. Don't do it. See, there's... Yeah, that's the, there's always an in for it. Uh, but yeah. twenty two thousand overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. That's pretty good. As it should, as it should be. I mean, they did a bang up job with that game. Nice. So, yeah. You do. You pre predominantly do challenge runs. What's what's been the hardest one for you to get through yet? I, I mean, it's you're not you haven't gone to the point where you're doing the Congo Legend of Dragoon run. 
I'm sure that's probably in the cards. I think in terms of like my own personal frustration, doing Legend of Dragoon with only Shanna yeah. was absolutely miserable. The game itself actually isn't that hard with Shanna. You literally just throw magical items at everything and they die. That's actually how the speed run is done, which is kind of cool. But the problem is in the end game, there are no more magical items. They literally just stop appearing. So you're kind of stuck. And on, on the final boss, you use all your magic items and you get through about half of the boss's HP. And then Shanna's physical attacks are completely underwhelming. And you're just sitting there praying that you have enough healing items to get through it. Which I did. I did get through mm -hmm. it. It took a long, long time. But I did make it. Actually, no, it was just defending. I just had to defend back all my HP. Uh, but I also think that the Titus only run was particularly frustrating. It was fun. That. Yeah. It was fun. But by God, that game is not made to be done with one character. It's not designed that uh, way. I, I mean, the, the amount of patience that you have, I mean, that, uh, patience, I suppose, in quotes, because mm. I think you're just, you're just struggling through it most of the time. And you can tell when you flash to your stream footage. I mean, you're just barely getting through these. And I think it's, that's part of the draw as well. Like, I, I'm like, how can you just do this? It's just torture almost. It's, you know what, it's a lot more fun on stream with I'm an sure. audience. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's, it's a lot more fun to have people to talk to about it and yep. commiserate with me. And what's really interesting is my Discord community is now becoming a place where people post their personal logs yeah. of their challenge runs, which I find really fun. Yep. I think we have about like 10 or 12. No, maybe more. I think we have like four going on right now. Someone, people doing Chrono Cross and... Someone's, I think someone's doing Dark Souls with swords only, something like that. So just all sorts of challenge runs and people locking ah. their progress and sort of figuring it out. So that's one of my, that's like one of my favorite yep. things now, sort of reading what people are doing. And Lord knows I will be stealing their ideas for my videos. Well, right now myself. we've got Chrono Cross Poverty Run. Um, oh, yeah. The, the Chrono Cross Sprig only challenge. Oh, my God. Uh, Chrono Trigger Marl only run. Um, that's, see, I'm, Chrono Trigger is the next one I'm streaming. Yeah. So I'll be doing Chrono Trigger Chrono only. Interesting. Is interesting. There's a lot of and good ones here. You... New oh, I don't Discord. Have it, actually, never mind. Oh, actually, no, I do have it. But you can probably see it. Anyway, I'm I'm very excited about it. I'll send you the thumbnail so you can post it in this video yep. so people can see what I'm doing. But it's, yeah. it's I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to be super fun. But there's an, another of my you know we can we can sort of transition into my some of my favorite YouTubers are challenge runners now. Yep. Um, there's this guy Bringle. I don't know if you've seen him, but he does all Paper Mario Thousand Year Door challenges. Not all. He has some other things on his channel. He does Minecraft sure. as well. But those, his really popular stuff and I think his best content are his Paper Mario Thousand Year Door challenges. He does it without, with only partners. He does it with only, um, let's see, with, with without attacking. Like he'll use only items. Interesting. Uh, he does it, let's see, without, I think with, with no star points. And just abuses the badge system to all hell. I think he did it without badges or items. So literally just Mario and his partner and nothing else. Mm. Um, and that, so his runs of Thousand Year Door are now inspiring things that I can do with other games. For example, I'm doing like a Persona 3 run with no Velvet Room. Persona 3 Reload just came out. So yep. I think that I think that's going to be fun. That's interesting because, like, fun. you're uh, my my next question was going to be where you get all these challenge ideas from, whether they just pop into your head or you're just finding relevant content in kind of like the same circle that you're doing and taking those ideas and making again new evergreen content that will always be there for it's people to soak up. It's always just steal and twist. Yep. I mean, and I could literally do the same challenge as somebody else and just do it my way, right? Like, no, no two challenges are the same, and that's the wonderful thing yep. about them. There are. I, with like with regard to Persona Four, I think there are like five Izanagi only challenges online, and and they're just wonderful. And every single person did it their own way. Mm. Uh, what's his face? Um, Ragnar Alvar is now doing these Nuzlocks of Persona. I don't know if you've seen those, but they're amazing. He has one Persona per palace and just goes through and uh, you know permadeath on the other characters. And so I'm probably going to do something like that with Chrono Cross. It just seems too fun yeah. to pass up. Uh, rule set's going to be interesting, but we'll see. Um, but really, you know, there there's so much to be inspired by, and if you can find someone who's done an interesting challenge, you can take that and do it with another game. Mm. And the the interesting thing is, like you said, is you, no matter what you do, even if you borrow, like straight up borrow the idea, it's always going to have your twist because it's you making it. 
And then you're absolutely it's going to have its own personality because most of the time you stream all these. Well, you'd, you'd have to just for your own sanity now stream stream all these runs. <laughs> Yeah, so. unfortunately, I now have like two runs finished, and so I'm writing the script for Final Fantasy VII Girls only. Those are some of my favorites. Yep. I don't know; they're just fun. They're yeah. not they're not as challenging as the other ones, but they're just a fun way to play the game. Yeah. Um, and with the downfall of the completionist, I think the 100% era is starting for for Tantacles. So that's probably soon to come. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm, I'm a bit excited about it's it. It's looking like um, most of your your more popular videos are the girls only runs, like Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy X. Um, oh, they're going. They're going. Solo runs and girls only runs are, are currently the ones that people seem to really resonate with, because I think so many people just play the game with their girls only anyway. <laughs> it's just how people normally. It's just how they play the game. It's like if I'm going to play Final Fantasy X, why would I not just only use the girls? Isn't I mean, that like how you play. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like you said earlier, the Final Fantasy VII Cloud only 138,000 views. Yeah, it's going. Uh, I say Tidus only um, for. Um, I and and I say. I don't care. Yeah, people get on. <laughs> people get on me. It's like he said, Titus. It's like, oh, listen, listen. That's I'm hilarious. Gonna, we are entering. We are also entering the area of me potentially doing a video soon where I just mispronounce every single person's name <laughs> and not mention. Not just, yeah, yeah. One of my, one of my favorite. If you haven't seen him, uh, Jam Sack is an amazing up and coming creator as well who is doing. Uh, really more, he just sort of more plot focused and less about like the, the failure and more about just playing the game in an interesting way. Runs. Yeah. So he does like Final Fantasy VII with a class system, which I think is really cool. He That's just cool. gave everybody a class and said, we're sticking with that. But he focuses more on the plot. Anyway, the, the point is he, what was my point? What were we talking about? Uh, I lost it. It's saying okay. names incorrectly? Oh yeah, so he like called Tifa Tofu. That was it. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just liked it, and I, I like in your videos. There's always a theme, um, so you always name the characters uh, based off of something. I think what was the what was the Chrono Cross one that you've just done? There was somebody named uh, Ago. I did breakfast cereal. Breakfast, yeah, okay. And then we we maybe went into a little bit off cereal for a few of them because yeah. we had you know we had to, you can't you got to have some some variance there. Yeah. yeah, and I the one I just did. Before that, the the Final Fantasy VII ones, they're all fairy type Pokemon, and so mm. every enemy I'm going to name after a different Pokemon yeah. as well. Even though that's not, they're not really named, but I'm just going to say that's who we're fighting. People know who the bosses are, so we're just going to yeah. have fun with it. Well, I, I I think that's great, and this is this is the thing. Like I said, I this is I, I discovered your channel through all these challenge runs, and of course, Legend of Dragoon, and I I'm very interested to see what's what's next for your channel. It sounds like you're, you're going more towards maybe actually 100%ing things and doing more specific so, runs and. But I'm, you know, I'm interested to follow along, and I'll have I'll have your channel link in the disc, in the in the discreetly do, discreetly do, as well as your yeah. Discord as That's well. If anybody... we're making it a thing, it's gonna it's gonna be like the Mean Girls thing. It's like stop, Chantically, stop trying to make discreetly do a thing. Discreetly do is not going to happen. That's I like it. That's one of the standout words for me. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like I I I I love this. I love your channel, and I, I think you're a great content creator. That's why I wanted to get you on the 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 show today, and. I appreciate you coming on the very first one before I've even properly announced it. Um, I haven't even done the branding for it yet, so I just wanted. It's to better not to announce things before you do them. Yeah, right. Just announce it when it comes out. People yeah. will find it. You know exactly. Every, every time I've announced something like it's something special for my channel, this new thing is comes. happening, and then I then I lose interest, and then I don't do it. So I don't announce things until they are truly scheduled done. and happening. No, yep. I just don't do it. That's the way to do. Um, and uh, the one thing that I liked about today's interview is um, there's some really great uh, YouTube content creation information in there as well, like in regards to branding and thumbnails and and content uh, and stuff as well. I think there's there's a lot to learn for people who are interested in maybe following in your footsteps for for challenge runs. Maybe um, I mean you never know. It's it's a it's a niche on YouTube that I think is seeing a lot of growth now, and I think. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting to see. And the nice thing is they're very loud footsteps, so they're easy to follow. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> How could so they like not that. be? Um, yeah. But I think that's great. I, I really appreciate you coming on the, the show today. Any final thoughts? Anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a delight. Um, first, a piece of wisdom. Yes. If they ask you to take your top off, get the money first. Yeah. So let's start there. Yep. Um, but you can find me on YouTube. I am Tantacles. The only Tentacles. If you search for Tentacles, you're probably going to get redirected to Tentacles. Yep. Just be aware of that. And then you're going to have to click, did you mean Tentacles? And you'll say, <laughs> yes. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Um, 
and and that's the main place to find me. I do have another channel called Dr. Jake, which we'll get back to eventually. Yep. But um, you can find me on Instagram at Dr. Jake Media. That's sort of the the media company that keeps all of my YouTube stuff together. And um, yeah, if any boat companies want to sponsor me, I'm open to shilling myself out for a good maritime vessel. So you should sponsor a boat. The, Absolutely. No, the boat should sponsor me. <laughs> Don't buy me. <laughs> if, uh, yeah. If, if, if you want me to start saying that you should buy a boat, I give me that money. Yeah. Listen, I will. I'll holla for a dollar. Just wait for those sponsors. I'll holla for 50 cent. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so. Super funny, super witty, super charming, super great guy. Thank you so much, Tanticles, for coming on today. It was great to chat to you and learn more about what you do. And more importantly, learn more about challenge runs and how we can approach them if we you know, want to get into that. If you're watching here on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Or if you're listening on Apple and Spotify, don't forget to rate and follow if you can. All relevant links will be in the show notes or the description. We'll see you again on the next one. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Ta-da.